today uh, our topic is localization for story weaver and we'll be talking about approaches and the challenges that the story weaver team uh, at pratham books has uh, encountered uh, and we have uh, for the first time uh, two guests uh, uh, together who are going to uh, uh, share the story with us uh, suman and amna uh, so can i ask uh, suman first to introduce yourself and then amna yeah yeah sure um actually full name is sumana manjunath and people started call me suman which i also like so please continue to call me suman uh, currently i am playing the role of implementation head in pratham books okay so otherwise uh, i have been playing this implementation uh, head role in uh, prime focus technologies previously and then long career in wipro around 17 years and i was also a scientist in isro so that's the quick introduction yeah wow amna Yeah. Hi, uh, this is Amna here. I'm a marketing communications course grad. Started my career in advertising, and I think ended up in the social development sector as a rebound. Uh, you know the rebound uh, affair, and uh, it's been uh, story. We I joined Story Weaver right at the nascent stage, which was around January 2016. I am the content partnerships manager on the platform, so my role involves nurturing the global communities for content and building content and local language libraries. So we work with a. with varied stakeholders from publishers authors translators to literacy organizations universities and also indigenous community groups who are trying to archive and safeguard their language via stories for children all right uh, amazing uh, welcome both of you uh, thanks for uh, taking out your time for this session uh, so this particular session uh, i expect it to be very relevant for people uh, uh, who are thinking about making your sites or your products be it large or small in multiple different languages uh, and specifically for people who work in the content side of things as well as people who work in the tech side of things so content and developers uh, development teams uh, this session is going to be very relevant for uh, uh, both these groups a few instructions uh, uh, are uh, this particular session is going to be about 20 25 minutes of the speakers uh going through uh, a uh, a set of slides that they have prepared and after that we'll move on to q and a uh, we won't take on a lot of uh questions in between the uh, the slides when they are uh, speaking through their uh, uh, the prepared talk uh, and after that about 30 minutes down the line we are going to start taking questions but in case you have questions and you are on zoom uh, feel free to use the q and a panel to put in your questions i'll be taking it at the end uh and if you are watching us on youtube uh, uh feel free to put in questions there because i'm told that those questions will also be forwarded to us uh so uh that's all uh, that i have as initial starting instructions uh over to suman and amna uh please go through your presentation and then we'll go for more questions sure thank you sovik uh thank you so i'll start off this presentation we thought uh, about our journey of localizing story weaver it's been quite a uh, it's been it's been an up and down roller coaster ride as far as localizing the platform was concerned but before we dive into uh, you know what were our challenges and approaches and now the kind of processes that we follow and where we want to go as far as the dream process is concerned we thought it would be a good idea to start off by setting a context to what story weaver actually is so just story weaver basically is a repository or digital repository of children's picture books multilingual picture books they are all freely accessible on the platform for uh, uh you know for to read to download and also to create and translate so basically we have two universes you could come and consume stories on the platform by reading them online or by downloading them for offline environments or you could also come and contribute to the stories uh, on the platform you could create your own stories or uh, you could also translate the stories on the platform into languages that you are uh, you know you are uh, versatile in the idea was to bring together uh, the whole uh, educator librarian spaces because we knew that there was a very big need gap for uh, content in, in 
joyful reading content uh, in multiling in la in multiple languages so there was a child who would be speaking a certain language at home and when she would go to school or when they would go to school there just wouldn't be any literature in the language uh, spoken at home and they would feel lost and the circle of failure would kind of set in pretty quickly from there uh, so which is why pratham books uh, uh, developed story weaver as the open source platform and uh, we the journey has been uh, very interesting uh, we started off in september 2015 with 800 books on the platform to now where we have 23000 books and it's growing every day uh, this was the number from yesterday i'm sure it has gone up uh, overnight uh, basically we have uh, around 200 and content in 255 languages on the platform with 40 million uh, readership of the books uh, that is on platform and off platform and about 3.6 million users who come uh, on the platform and uh, use it uh, the 255 languages that we are speaking about is the content localization the localization of the story books on the platform and not the platform localization just wanted to make that clear um and again before we dive into the whole journey of localization we thought it was important to set context to who is it that we speak to when we localize a platform because those uh, profiles and personas have a very big impact on the decision making right from language selection uh to down to uh, the whole uh, review component of the localizing uh, process etc so who is our user really so the story weaver universe is basically divided into two uh, sets the user the one so the the educators librarian parents who come onto the platform to consume the content uh, and the creator universe who are the people who contribute to the stories on the platform uh, so when i talk about the user the persona that comes most to my mind is an maybe an educator librarian or a parent working closely uh, on the at the grassroots level with underserved communities who are low resourced and uh, they uh, may or may not be digital natives necessarily uh, just to give just to put a face to the persona we have shared with you the picture of mesmer garma he is uh, the founder of rasa bibi library in ethiopia africa and he's right now showing the amharic stories uh, to his patrons from the library uh, coming to the story we were creator universe this is this was something uh, this is something that we are very very proud of we have uh, a lot of translation partners on the platform and which is why the virality of language content on the platform really so who are they they are basically authors translators but also educators and librarians who feel the need uh, of the gap of uh, stories in mother tongue languages and they come on to the platform to create these stories so that they can take it back for their programmatic interventions with the children at the grassroots level uh, they may be translating offline or online they may be you know engaging with the uh, platform offline or online and then uh, coming online to kind of publish the stories and then using them they may or may not be bilingual with english actually they may probably be bilingual with the dominant state language or the region language and then the underserved language that they are serving uh, and definitely may or may not be a, you know it's it's i we are not sure whether they are digital natives or story weaver is probably one of the few platforms that they visit when they come on the internet and mainly every communication happens via whatsapp etc uh, the photograph that you see is our favorite team from suchna uh, this is a foundation a community foundation in virbhav west bengal india they have actually translated books uh, into santali and kora from bangla books so the source language for them is bangla and uh, they've actually translated over 200 books over the last two 20, uh, over the last two years so over to suman for uh, deep diving into the uh, into our journey of localization thanks am okay the picture you see here is uh, this is what i see on my ga the google analytics screen so you, you can clearly see that i mean the visibility is huge right i mean it's around 219 countries the story weaver has uh, punched into and the content partnership is more than 50 okay so as of today the numbers are okay so having said this i mean there are uh, while uh, the localization 
what do you say i mean let me set the context of localization because i have seen whenever i speak to the people it's almost confused with the translation only language translation okay but actually localization is not just that okay so localization is adapting your product or content to any market or country okay keeping four things in mind okay that is the linguistic part of it cultural part of it political and the legal differences so it's it's a huge topic altogether okay and translating your site language or your uh, labels is just a part of it however that's the biggest part of it i mean when you really try to localize your product okay including the language i mean that's where all the challenges and the real uh, pandora box opens okay so while both localization and international focus on the same goal of delivering the experience in a new language okay so what is the real difference between an internationalization and the localization internationalization is the way in which you solution your product and develop it along with the ethics of sdlc cycle okay so um, and the frameworks that you build in okay and every day on which the developers work on so ultimately that leads into the localization okay so having said this uh, these are the four major reasons okay so while at a global level there could be n number of reasons why people go for localization actually what is very important from story weaver perspective is definitely being multilingual that to at a scale of 259 languages as of yesterday okay localization goes hand in hand in hand no question asked and we want to do it okay that's that's a uh, that's a need okay and global reach we just talked about so too many countries we are into so definitely we want to add this into our kitty so that i mean we we stand out and when i say cultural nuances right i mean this is the actually the touching part of it okay so can i for example can i show or rather can i render story weaver okay so with a picture where a girl is dancing to an afghanistan partner definitely can't because it is against their cultural fit you know so that is so when you do it when you do your localization it is not just the, uh, just changing the language or uh, taking care of currency time and all those things right i mean it is even the cultural part of it okay and then coming to the platform integrations this is our strength so story weaver has multiple packages offered to their partners and those uh, integrations definitely need this to be part of it so that i mean it really uh connects to them like for example i mean if it is uh, uh, i'll give you the example of our microsite we have a curated gateway story weaver uh, uh, microsite i mean that's uh, named as learn at home you can take a look at it i will share the references so that's localized in hindi and english i mean hindi currently so when you click on the story weaver microsite in hindi actually it opens story weaver in hindi along with the curated hindi stories so that i mean people can easily connect to okay so this is one integration there are multiple more which i'll talk down in the slides amna you can can you move to the next slide okay so when uh, when all of us the content team the tech team and the product management team sat together and we all said yeah the localization is the way forward and we need this to be done okay what we could see is only the mountain of problems okay so then we said okay uh, okay let's uh, the then what is the way forward so prioritization and setting up what are the real challenges and some principles for our own self so that i mean keeping our audience and end users in mind so what we are stating is the top four reasons okay so definitely the first one is continuously evolving and dynamic platform what does it mean is i can give you a recent example uh, in a i think a past to past week we had three releases and take it from me at least minimum 50 labels we changed okay with a new feature coming in if that is the speed in which the application is developing how do you do that catch up game of localization okay so with respect to the n number of languages so that's where the content team the product management team and the tech team need to come together and set some principles okay so that i mean we definitely cater to this big gap okay so the principle that we are going ahead with in story weaver is yeah there is a catch up game okay at any moment in time there could be some gaps okay so if you open a hindi game the uh, hindi site i mean there might be some labels which are still in english which is okay but we are going to do a periodic release only accumulating some new features and then localizing it okay so i mean what i'm trying to tell you guys is i mean it's not an easy task if your product is still uh, developing so it's only the principle that will help you to take the way forward anna can you next one please 
yeah this is another one okay so with the shoestring budgets that we work with at the uh, story we were right i mean there are n number of commercial solutions if i look out in the market of the shelf okay so but i mean whether we want to really go for that one okay or is it something you develop uh, knowing the nitty gritties and the culture of your organization works and put in the in house frameworks so what i am really happy with is the process that we have come out which is really working cost effective and still the uh, required quality has been given out so that's another principle definitely matters right and the third one is language support uh, versus roi yeah this is another big topic how many languages you will uh, you will do it i mean the localization there need to be a return of investment and you need to continuously measure and take those calls yeah this is not a, a tech person will do but the product management and the content team will take uh, hard decisions on that okay so while the tech team is just given a pipeline of saying that tomorrow you need to localize in this tomorrow, day after tomorrow this language so this is another way where anybody any team who is going to work on localization has to put some principles in amna yeah this is another one okay having said that we are continuously evolving and doing multiple releases a week kind of it so the other thing is then what is the order of localization okay so where it is okay to see the gaps for the end user so that the the feeling and the uh, experience is not impacted right i mean so uh, so then what is the principle i mean it it differs from different applications but we being multilingual and the kind of users i'm not told about right so you can clearly imagine that the consumption society is more compared to the creation society so definitely the order of localization is i mean ensure that you keep the consumption page, uh, pay, uh, pages always up to date with the localized languages okay it's okay to take the gaps on the creation or the translation side so these are some four major areas i mean it might differ based on the application but i'm pretty gen i mean sure that these are the generic ones okay anybody is going to face okay if the development is still on okay so having said this uh, principle said then the major challenges talked about so i'll just quickly take you people through i mean how did we still streamline the whole process okay so uh, when i talked about the localization in the beginning i said uh, the crux is internationalization and then only you can bring the theme of localization so when i talk about internationalization you can go to uh, software technology uh, guide where uh, it has n number of sections written on that i18 n section right i mean so i don't want to we would don't want to attack everything okay because it's a uh, time and the money investment what is that you really want to be internationalized in your application so that is another guidance that need to be set when content and product management and the tech teams need to sit together because we cannot code for everything okay so from the day one okay though it is supposed to be as per the three it is one time investment in my experience across these 25 years it has been never one time investment okay it's you you keep developing and a feedback circle again goes back to your application development and the principles so ha having said that there are four uh, important very things anybody need to take care of when they do their software development design and the principles and the architecture so amna you can bring all the other three so that i'll address them together okay so uh, very uh, very meaningful and the very basics of it right i mean obviously you need to separate your ui elements from your source code you cannot directly tie it in what if if you want to show different images okay based on different languages okay so if that is the case so definitely you need to bring that layer separation so that you can handle it separately uh, unicode goes uh, without saying right i mean if you are multilingualistic i mean you cannot store your uh, latin language in in latin itself so it has to be unicode i mean every storing has to happen in the unicode format and definitely if the whole text need to be shown in a different language starting from the beginning that day every developer codes he or she cannot hard code anything every label need to be coded in such a way that i mean it comes in the resource file okay at the end of the day so so you have multiple resource files based on whatever gets rendered i mean your build happens like that okay and the last thing is i mean i don't know whether it will be uh, uh, or applicable for all the applications but definitely for us uh, because 259 languages and n, n number of them are right to left as well 
so your css also need to be in such a way that when you find out which language in which the sentences are uh, rendered at any given moment in time it has to act very uh, neatly and intelligently to show the uh, text accordingly so these are the four major generic principles anybody need to at least immediately to start with apart from this as i said the currency date and there are so many other things right i mean which is not relevant for us but if you ask me honestly i mean they are the easy things to solve i mean or cater to okay so having said this uh, context right i mean i'll just quickly take you through the steps that is involved in any localization process yeah the first of all i mean this whole chain will repeat per language okay so first of all the scoping needs to happen whether it's an rtl language okay so what is the language that gets selected and what are the nitty gritty here yeah, you have a internationalized code running yeah and in your uh, uh, in your uh, what is source repository but take it from me definitely based on the language that you are going to select or you will be given by the content management team you need to have the scoping done so that you upfront can if you can find out some gaps and fit it in so that the whole cycle reduces okay so the so that is what is i mean usually i would know i mean the tech team is what is led by me we will already know what is the pipeline of the languages which will be given by amna major is saying that aaj ke tarikh mein french karna hai tomorrow spanish something like that so but when we pick up the language one by one and handle the integrity of it some languages go just like this and some languages take a u turn and uh, fixing some things from the principles and then rolling out yeah the next one is the trickiest thing okay so it it means uh, a lot for at least the organizations like story viewer uh, for us i mean i have seen uh, uh, amna sitting on some info messages saying that suman this is not good in hindi isko mai fir se reroute karte i mean actually we rolled out one uh, release and she immediately called me up and made me make another release just to correct one more word one word in that okay so we are as sensitive as uh, as that and because we are rendering it for children okay and across the uh, um, across the globe so what is really required is the proper contextualized meaning translations okay so that is what it is so the crux of it as soon as you say that, that there is a language translation that's going to happen in your uh, uh, localization process this step is the crux of it if you get this right okay so take it from me all other phases will go very smoothly okay so and it depends upon every organization how they want to set right this i mean what we have done is uh, there is something called story translation effective index okay so i will take you through in the next slides so amna measures this okay so meticulously to tell me saying that french has to be in api driven okay so when i mean uh, uh, roll out french using the uh, this translation apis for hindi she will come and say that no it's uh, none of the things are not working okay so you i will get you the manual labels through our translators or whatsoever the means so then we need to give her a mechanism so that the translators can work on it give us the translations uh, for them and then you can load your resource files so it depends upon the language and that's how she measures it so by going through her own i mean we have our own uh, decision matrices and i'm sure when organizations do it themselves they will, they need to find out something for themselves based on the quality they are looking for yeah so once you have your scoping done principle set and you know how the data is coming to you okay is it uh, api is it manual is it both of it so once that much is done you have the whole master labels at one at, at your end so then what is really required is one critical review quickly to go through it okay so that i mean the next set of processor easy and this is where the context translator sometimes it might be trans, not translation right it's a transliteration like for example we have a word called read along in english there is no translation uh, api that works on it i mean it gives back the english so that time you might need to use transliteration and in some places you might need to even transcript you might need to rewrite yeah so once you get these three things right i mean uh, what, i mean on the technical side what is really uh, left over so you have you must have an engine which will take these inputs uh, uh, load to your resource files okay and it depends upon the complexity of your application right i mean in our story viewer i would like to mention that i mean uh, our back end is on ruby on rails and front end is on react 
so you can just imagine and some values will come from db so you need to have three places uh, seeded with these values your json file your yml file and even the db okay so you need to find out this is where the actual tech work starts based on the application stack and the technology you will find out how do you automate from the given master uh, translations at one point so this is what happens and your qa your partners your translators the content team comes out uh, helps you out when it is loaded on any test environment to see your css is not breaking maybe some line, uh, some lines are very longer that you need to short on them so these are the very quick uh, reviews that will happen before the roll out and obviously so once the rollout is done right i mean there is a retrospection session that is definitely required i mean which i have found it very uh, useful and effective so you will you will go back and uh, change your way of working or the even sometimes the application uh, development processes as well saying that what went wrong in this rollout so that's what i'm trying to show here that i mean there is a feedback that goes to your internationalization or your uh, the way of development okay so what i'm trying to show here is uh, now that we know the whole context and the whole process how it can be attacked uh, and with your own principles and mm, the solutions that are built around so it's the end to end process now okay so mm, having all the teams together so you have the data prep we just spoke about it could be only three ways possible right i mean either you have the manual translation done or api driven or it could be the combination of it what is really working for us is uh, the third one manual plus api okay so based on the kind of uh, uh, the language sensitivity context sensitivity that we run in our story weaver for some languages it is api driven okay uh, and this is what i was talking about in the previous step saying that this is what amna is very much worried about okay if you see the due diligence that goes in right what we are trying to show you here is okay so uh, in order to Uh, conclude that for the French, I can use the, or rather, the for the Spanish, I can use the French APIs. She is uh, running the translation, which an auto drafts, which is coming through an API and taking the feedback from the field. And you can see that I mean, it is more than seventy four percent of the people said that the auto drafts are really good. Okay, and they could make only very less changes so that the story can be uh, published. Okay, so based on that, I mean, there is a principle that has been set, and based on that, she decides. which route to be taken for the translation so that she can advise the tech team accordingly and this is another wonderful uh, data point so uh, whatever the exercise that we carried out okay so we were able to uh, help our uh, other partner teams like msr uh, google uh, teams and all so that which shows that okay so i mean what is the efficiency of their own uh, translation apis right i mean the, in the in the real world usage okay and the best thing for us is you can see that when we went for this translation aps and if they were good okay actually our story publishing timeline also crunched from uh, 45% so previously if it is taking some one hour okay so there was i mean it got reduced by 40 45% okay that's what we are trying to show the other benefits of it okay so coming back to the end to end process we have the data prep done okay and content team is the main actor there and then we have the review team we just talked about it how it happens okay here also major the content team comes and sees to that i mean the nitty gritties of the translation quality has been taken care and ultimately the tech team comes and takes this and they will roll it, roll it out so having said this this is this gives you the end to end process view okay so this is where we are currently into and there are some improvements that i am currently looking for or rather working on which uh, which uh, if somebody is starting today i mean they can even keep this in mind okay and start with this uh, planning and investment itself okay if we, for the data prep i mean how beautiful it will be if you can build a localization editor itself okay that means somebody should be able to open your uh, site in a editor kind of it select a label okay give the translation there itself and visualize it contextually plus uh, the length of it or the uh, what do you see the real rendering effect of it i know i mean it's uh, it's somewhat very advanced one but i'm i'm sure it is not very difficult to build it okay at least for the out uh, outside labels the menus and headings we should be able to quickly build it and give it to our translator so that uh the tech intervention content intervention team interventions becomes lesser and it is full proof when it is given to us okay 
the next one in the review thing is uh, having said that i mean knowing our partners and our which are might not might not be tech savvy today they are all entering the data into some central repositories how about i mean me giving a ui for them so that i mean they can directly put into our masters okay so some are very specific to story weaver but you can take away with the principles and see when you are starting for a localization process which one need to be really built first okay so we went in a simpler way and now we are getting into the complex improvements and what is really possible on the rollout side is uh, based on the tech stack that we have we need to do a deployment okay so when even a single label changes okay on the ruby side uh, uh, or the react side so maybe i might need to find out a way so that i mean today uh, if a one label changes 30 minutes okay so because i need to do one click deployment and then then only the reviewer can really see how it comes out so that is one area we are really working on to see that i mean how can we really reduce or avoid deployment and if uh, amna changes one word it should be a real time update for her, her on the in, uh, internal environment so these are some things i mean with a uh, final view of it so this is something i just wanted to uh, see uh, you guys to see i mean you folks to see this see this is uh, we are working with a partner in afghanistan uh, dd library so this is an integration at the site level okay so when some some user from the dd library clicks on a story weaver icon on there so you can see that with their header and footer story weaver is getting launched in their native language uh, farsi okay through an api call which writes on the sso integration that is single sign on okay even the partner is able to tell us i mean on based on the user preference uh, what is the language filters that we need to set and what is the site locale that we need to even uh, bring up to okay so it could be hindi plus uh, farsi filter set so that the content curation also happens i mean this is another very strong use case that we have that why we need to go for a local localization in uh, story weaver 